Welcome to Easter Sunday at Harvest Worship Center. I'm so excited today to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the grave. I've got news today. The tomb is empty yes. and Jesus is alive. I mean, I'm yes. so excited today. I could do a happy dance because of what Jesus <laughs> has done for us. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. Yes, he and is. And today we believe that God is going to prepare people to experience his miracle power right. in their life, in their finances in their family health right we believe that god is something for you so get ready because god wants to do something good for you today i just i just have this sense that god is going to do something as we come with expectation right. for this easter sunday absolutely now you know this week or i mean really this last month there has been a lot of talk about things Unessential and essential services. Yeah, that's true. And I got to say that I don't agree necessarily with all the things that the government thinks are non essential. Yeah. For instance, I think that my hairstylist is essential. Because I, I might agree. <laughs> I was saying to him this week, you know, going on YouTube and um, I need, you know, the highlights there to kind of cover up where you can see some of the gray coming in. And I'm not trying to show all that on YouTube. But uh, anyway, apparently the government does not think that they're essential. But Maya, if you are tuned in, I just want you to know that you are essential to us. I can't wait until we can actually come to see you. Yeah, no, but you know, not just that, though. This week, I don't know if any of you heard, but our premier announced that the Easter Bunny is an essential worker and that he has official uh, 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 permission by the province to deliver treats to children. Now, wow. I'm not against children having treats on Easter Sunday. Right. However, we need to understand that Easter is not about treats. It right. is not about a bunny. Easter is about the celebration of what Jesus yes. Christ has done for each one of us. Yes. It's about the celebration of the of the God who loved us so much yes. that he went to the cross and died for us. Yes. And on the third day, he rose again. Yes. Jesus Christ is essential. And that's what it's about. Yes. And so what we have to understand today that we want to officially declare that Jesus is essential. Yes. Right now, let's say this together. Jesus yes. is essential. On the count of three. One, two, three. Jesus, Jesus is, is essential. essential. Absolutely. He is essential. And his love and his power don't have any limitations. That's right. They they don't have any restrictions. He's not limited by political policy. Right. He's not limited by social distancing. Right. He's not limited by any sickness or disease or financial need. Jesus will meet you right where you are. Wherever you are today, if you're in your home, if you're with your family member, right. maybe if you're at work watching us, or maybe you're in the hospital, you need to know today that Jesus has no boundaries, right. no limitations. If you call on him, him, he will answer. That's true. He and he is essential for us to call on him. See, on this Easter Sunday morning, there are some incredible things for us to remember about what Jesus has done. Right. And Jesus' death was essential for our life. Well, that's, that's such a good point. That his death is essential for us to have life. Yes. Because yes. if he hadn't died, then we don't have life. Right. Right. The Bible tells us this in Isaiah 53, starting in verse 4 and 5. It says, yet it was our weaknesses that he carried. Right. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. Wow. And we thought this were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion wow. and he was crushed for our sins. This is a an incredible thought. This is a powerful statement. It says that we thought, people thought that he was being punished for something that he did. But the Bible tells us that it's each one of us. It's our weakness and our sorrow and our rebellion. Easter is about the fact that Jesus didn't die for himself. Right. He died for every one of us. Mm -hmm. He died. It was about the fact that we have all sinned. Every single one of us have disobeyed the Bible. Every single one of us have just done what was right in our own eyes. We rebelled against God. 
and and we deserve to be punished, but Jesus took that punishment on himself. Absolutely. You know, we did things that the Bible told us that we're not supposed to do. We've all acted out of our own interests and out of our own desires. Yeah. We were we were willing we willingly chose to ignore God. Right. But the Bible tells that Jesus was punished for us so that we could be forgiven. Wow. I'll tell you this. I'm so thankful today that yes. Jesus did for me what I couldn't do for yes. myself. Jesus didn't just die because of his uh, of something that he did. He died for us today. And the Bible says that all of our sin was placed upon him on wow. the cross that day. Wow. Jesus was died so that we could be forgiven. But you see, verse 5 goes on and says, he was beaten so that we could be whole, and he was whipped so we could be healed. Wow. Easter's about the fact that Jesus was beaten and whipped so we could be healed and whole. And if you need healing today, whether it's spiritually, physically, you need to know today that Jesus died for you healed. Oh, right. that's the reason he went to the cross. He went to the cross so that you wouldn't carry the weight of that, that you don't right. have to be broken. But today you can be healed yes. and whole because of what Jesus did for you on the cross. You know, it's amazing because the Bible tells us that when Jesus went to the cross, that he was whipped. And it says in, in the scripture that 30 times 39 lashes when he was whipped that he received and you know medical um, professionals have said that the strains of disease that come are 39 strains major. major strains of diseases in our and he took all of that on himself whatever witness facing it says that he took on his body so that we could call on him for healing and for wholeness i'm so thankful for that so so today if somebody's listening to us and you're like i need his healing or maybe you're in this place where you're feeling broken because of life has left you in that place maybe through relationships or circumstance or situation you need to know mm. that jesus went to yes. the cross for you yes that jesus loves you and cares about you yes. and cares about you are and the reason we celebrate the cross and what christ did is because it's for your healing it's for yes. your wholeness jesus was beaten for you to be whole he was whipped so you could be healed yes. that's an incredible savior that's incredible but you know the verse goes on and it says in the very next verse all of us like sheep have strayed away yeah. we've left god our own path yeah. and yet the lord laid on the sins on him the sins of us all yeah. so easter is about the fact that we all went our own way we followed our own path and our own path ultimately leads to destruction. See, and here's the thing. Sometimes people think, well, you know, you know, I'm a good person. That's why God died. Or that person's a good person and God died for them. But I'm mm -hmm. not a good person and God wouldn't care about me that much. You need to understand, it says in Romans chapter 5, 8, that while we were still sinning, when we wow. weren't thinking about God, he wow. sent his son to die for us. You need to know today that God loves you so much that he sent his son to die for you. Not because you're perfect, not because you've never failed, not because you've never done anything wrong, right. but because he loves you that much. Yes. And I'm so thankful today because I've made my share of mistakes. I've made my share of failures. But you know what? God loves me. Right. And while I was still doing wrong, he died for me. While I, did, while I wasn't thinking about him, he was thinking about me. And you need to know today that God's thinking about you, that yes. God loves you, that God cares about you. And the reason he went to the cross was to save you from your hurt, from your pain, that you could be saved, you could be healed, and you could be whole. Now that's an incredible Lord, we serve yeah. Jesus. Jesus is the Father's plan to rescue you. And so here's the thing we need to understand today. The Father had a plan to rescue us from his sin, wow. and Jesus was that plan. Wow. And you say, the Bible tells us that, you know what? He would come, and he would pay for our sins. And literally, there is no other name by which people can be saved yeah. Yeah. but by the name of Jesus. Jesus is the Father's plan. You see, we're guilty of sin. We're guilty of rebellion. We're we're guilty of going our own way. We're guilty of choosing our own path. But God said that even though we're yes. guilty of all those things, he would send his yes. perfect, his one and only son yes. to earth who would carry the price for our sins and everything we've done wrong. 
Every single one of us have been guilty of going our own way and doing our own thing. But I'm so thankful that Jesus showed his incredible love for us that before we were even born, before we were even, before we even committed all of those things that were for him, he died for us. He died for our rebellion. He died for our sin. He died for our healing. He died to offer us the best life. And when we come into relationship with him, then we accept that our sins have been paid for by him. Yeah. We can live because of his death. But here's the great news. His death is not the end of the story. So, so, so Jesus is essential for us to have life. Yes. But Jesus is also today. Yes. And on Easter yes. Sunday morning, I want you to be encouraged. Let your faith be built up. Yes. Let hope arise. Yes. Jesus died, but Hallelujah. the death could not hold him. It could not keep him down. Jesus was raised again on the third day. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 2, verse 24, but God released Jesus from the horrors of death and raised him back to life. For death could not keep him in its grip. Oh, today, right. I'm so glad today that death couldn't keep yes. Jesus in his grip. It was on Friday that Jesus hung on the cross and died. And Satan thought he had defeated God's own son. But I've got good news. That was Friday when Jesus died for us. But on Sunday, he came back yes. alive. Death was defeated. Yes. And, the, and Jesus came and brought did. You see, it was Jesus himself that predicted on the third day that he would break hold of death and he would come back to life. I'm so thankful that day because Jesus lives, you can live today. Yes. Because Jesus is alive, you can be alive yes. today. Because Jesus defeated the grave, you'll yes. be able to defeat the grave as well. Yes, because Jesus was victorious. He won the victory over sin. He won yes. the victory over death. And now you can have victory through him. We can have victory. Right. This is exciting news today. I hope some of you right where you are just saying, I'm excited because I can have victory because Jesus has won it all for me. He's won the victory. Whatever it is that we're battling in our lives, think about it just for a minute. What is it that you're battling in life today? What is the challenge that you're up against today? What are you fighting against even inside of yourself? You can have victory in Jesus. So if you're battling addiction, you can have victory in yes. Jesus. If you're battling anger or unforgiveness, you can have victory in yes. Jesus today. If you've been battling hurt and shame because of things that have happened in your life, you can have yeah. victory today because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. You know what the Bible tells us? 15, verse 57. It says, but thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have got the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, whatever we felt like, if you felt like your past choices have been holding you back from a better future, you know, we, we always say this, that the past is past. Right. There's nothing that we can do to go back and erase and we it. We can't rewrite it. We can't rewrite it. We can't, re we can't change our bad choices. We can't change our mistakes, but the good news is that we can have victory over our past right. in Jesus. Because here's, here's the thing. The past doesn't need to hold us back. Yes. And the past doesn't need to define us. So you know, I made my share of mistakes, but I'm so glad today that because of Jesus, yes. I have victory over my past. Yes. And now those things that I've done do not define who I am today, right. and they do not hold me back. Yep. I've got victory over my past, but I've also yes. got victory in my present. My present problems don't determine right. my future blessing. Oh. Whoa, I'm excited That's good. today. That's good. I so, think you should say that again. All right, I am going to. <laughs> all right, my present problems don't determine my future blessing. That's good. So listen to me. You might be having a problem or a situation right now that's got you down, got you worried, got you concerned. You need to understand that present situation doesn't determine your future blessing. Right. Yes, you might be in a little bit of a funk right now. Yes, you might be having a little bit of a challenge right now. Right. Yes, things might not allow you 
going to be. But you need to know that God's got yes. something in your future that's yes. better than your present yes. and better than your past. Yes. You've got to know today that guess what? Your present problems will not determine your future blessing because yes. God is on your side. He's going to be with you. He's yes. going to take you from victory to, to victory, victory to victory. Now yes. listen to me. Somebody needs to get a hold of this right now. I, I just feel this so strong in my heart. That as you're watching us, somebody needs to be determined. You know what? I'm not going to let my past right. define me, and I'm not right. going to let my past put me in that box. Right. I'm determined today that my present situation, I, I realize that it is what it is. I have some struggles. I have some battles. You know, I was hoping to be farther in my life than I am right now. Then I need to tell you this as clear and as strong as I can. It's all right. God hasn't forgotten you. God hasn't abandoned you. God hasn't turned his yeah. back on you. You keep looking to him. The very God that died yes. on, on that first uh, uh, Good Friday and rose again yes. on Easter Sunday yes. has come to bring victory into your life and into your situation. Yes. Jesus is victorious. Jesus is alive. And because of him, you can experience victory Absolutely. in your life right now and in eternity. You can experience victory because of Jesus. Right where you want you to. Because of Jesus, because of Jesus, I can experience victory. I can experience victory. We can experience his victory. Jesus' resurrection from the dead is essential for my victory. See, if Jesus didn't raise from the dead, then I have then all I have is my resources, right. my talents, my abilities, my right. relationships, right. and they better be good enough to get me out of my problem. Right. But I don't know about you, but I've come to places in my life where it didn't matter how good my friends were, they couldn't help me. Right. Doesn't matter how nice my family was, they couldn't help me. Right. Didn't matter how great a country was we lived in, my nation couldn't help me. And right. I came to this place where the problems that were going on were bigger than my resources to solve them. But because of Jesus' resurrection, yes. we need to know today that he died. And because he conquered death, hell, yes. and the grave, yes. that I too can conquer and walk in the victory that Christ has for my life. Yes, we have victory. Jesus is essential. I want somebody just to say that. Jesus is essential. Jesus is essential. See, and here it is. Jesus is essential for all we need. That's right. For everything that we need. That's you know, can I, be, can I be really honest with you this morning? You know, I have to tell you, with everything going on in the world right now and all the changes of the way that we have to do things, even the way that we, you know, do things on a Sunday morning, the way right. that we, you know, are, are doing things with the church, uh, you know, all of us are impacted. And, and personally, for me, you know, I, I don't really have a fear of, you know, getting sick with this COVID-19. That's not something. But I do want to tell you that I have had moments over these past couple of weeks where I have felt overwhelmed with all of the changes in the way that we have to do things. I've felt some days discouraged because I've had to make so many adjustments and not quite sure exactly how to do it. I felt that. And as we were approaching Easter Sunday and we were thinking about what are we going to share with you? at this time in this season that we're walking through, you know, as, as a nation, it's worldwide, yeah. but it's also personal. It's also individual that it's impacting each one of us right now. And, you know, the one thing that just kept coming back to me as I thought about Easter was this, Jesus is essential. Right. And he is the thing that I need the most right now in this season. You know, we think that there's all kinds things do I need to get this but this do I need to get that but that store is closed but the reality is when we you know just sit down and we're by ourselves and sometimes things are overwhelming Jesus is what we really need in this season he's essential to everything we need in life yes see Jesus is our hope and maybe you're feeling today hopeless right now Jesus is what you need the Bible yes. tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, that we are a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We've got a living hope now. I love this verse because it's a living hope. Yes. That means that it's not just... He's not dead. He's not right, in the grave. Right. And it's not just hope for a minute or it's not just, well, I had hope, but I've lost it. No, if it's a living hope, then every day it's, it's renewed and it's active. So every day I can pull on that hope. And so the days when maybe you're feeling like it's been a dark day, you can pull on that hope and know that tomorrow is going 
going to be better because Jesus is victorious. Yes, and and he's Jesus is essential to everything we need. Right. Jesus is our hope in dark days. Yes. This is our stress or yes. fear. And maybe right now, where you are in life, there are things around you that are causing you to lose some sleep or, or fears trying to creep in right. and, and into your life and literally is tur- putting you on the edge and you're feeling right. like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Jesus is what you need. Yeah. Jesus will give you peace. It's John chapter 14, verse 27. It says, peace I love. my yes. peace I give to you. Do not let your heart be trouble. Not be afraid. This is incredible. You don't just have any peace, but you have Jesus' peace. And yes. Jesus literally today is sending you his peace. And I love it. He says, don't let your hearts get troubled. Right. Don't, don't, do not be afraid. And so listen, we have something to do about that. We've got to determine, I'm not going to let, let my heart get troubled right. about what's going right. on. Right. I've got to determine right now that I'm not going to be afraid. And why am I not going to let my heart be troubled? And why am I not going to be afraid? Because Jesus Jesus. is with me. Jesus is on my side. The same Jesus that rose from the grave is beside me. And he doesn't just say you have peace. He's given me his peace. A peace that is beyond understanding. A peace that's beyond comprehension. Jesus gives me his peace today. Wow. What we need. It's Jesus' peace. Jesus is essential. He gives us hope. He gives us peace. Jesus gives us strength. He is our strength in overwhelming times. You know, maybe circumstances and situations that you're facing right now, maybe you have felt a little bit like me in moments where you're like, I'm just overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed by the things that I have to do. I'm overwhelmed by the circumstances that are going on around me. Jesus will give you the strength that you need. I love the Bible because it's so practical. It says in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, I will strengthen you and help you. Not I might or not maybe, I will strengthen you. Right now, wherever you are, you need to know that you can call on And he said, I will give you the strength. It's not just a physical strength, but it's an emotional strength. It's It's a strength in your mind and in your spirit to say, I have a resolve that I can get through this, that I can keep going, that I can see what the the great things that God has in store for me. He wants to give you strength. And we want to encourage you as strong as we can right where you are right now. Today, you need hope. Call on God right now. Yeah. He'll come and, and meet you. It's a living hope. He's yes. alive. Yeah. You need hope? Call on Jesus. Right. You need peace? Call on Jesus. Right. You need strength? Call on. Call you, can, you don't have to wait till the end of the service. You don't have to wait till we pray for him. But right now, right where you are, you can just put up your hand and say, yeah. Jesus, I need you. I need, I need you in my life and yes. I need you in my situation. Yeah. Jesus, please, I ask now, bring strength because I don't know how I'm going to get through. Yes. I don't know how I'm going to make it. But yes. Jesus, bring your strength into my life and situation right now. Yes. And Jesus, he's our strength. Jesus is also physically our healer when we're sick. Because there are people right now that need to hear this message. Yes. There are people right now that are going through difficulties in their health or in their body. Maybe their family member is, you know, they're not sure where to go or where to turn. And they need to hear this message that Jesus is your healer. Yes. He is your healer. You know, even this week, uh, you know, I heard specifically from a nurse saying, well, people, you know, they're getting sick, but they don't want to go to the hospital because of everything going on and they're not exactly sure where to turn. I want to encourage you. I'm not saying don't go to a doctor, but Jesus, call on his name. Jesus is healer. When you call on him and you ask him, the word of God says that by his wounds, you have been healed. The very fact that Jesus went to the cross, he said, I took all that sickness on me so then you can call on him and you can ask him for physically in your body to touch your body right where you are right now. And so right now, right where you are, you can just say, Jesus, if you're a healer, I need a healing into my body. You're not feeling good today. Maybe there's... You're going to say, Jesus, please, I need your healing into my body right now. Christ died and was rose again, and he is your healer. Not only is your healer, Jesus is your provider. Maybe you're 
Your finances are tight and you're feeling some pressure starting to build and with all this upheaval that's going on in our world, you're not exactly sure what you're going to do and how you're going to get through and you're trying to figure out your budget and you're feeling all kinds of stresses and all kinds of money pressures right now. Yeah. I've got news for you. Yes, yes. the pressure's real. Yes, right. the challenges are real. Right. But I'll tell you this, Jesus is your provider. Yes. I love it. Listen to what it says in Genesis chapter 22, verse 14. The Bible describes the Lord as the Lord who provides. Wow. God can provide for your problem. Yes. God can provide for your need. God can provide for what you're going through. Yeah. Right now, right where you are, you can just say, God, I need you to supernaturally provide. God, I'm doing everything I know how to do. God, I've applied for what I need to apply for from the government. God, I, I, I put out my resume. God, I, I've done everything I need to do. Yeah. But Lord, now I need, need your, provision. your provision. Listen to me. He yeah. is the God who provides. Yes. And let me tell you this. He can look after you. Your problem is big, but your God is bigger. bigger. And yes, his provision is. is limitless. Listen to me today. Somebody needs to hear this. God's provision is limitless for you today. And all you need to do is say, God, I need your provision in my life. And that's like, when you say that, it, it, listen, let me tell you this. In my experience, when I ask God for his provision, many times I haven't seen an immediate answer or it didn't go. I'll tell you this as I walked through the challenge. Nice. I turned around and I looked and said, I yeah. didn't get sunk by this problem. Yeah. God provided. Yeah. It was different than I thought. It wasn't yeah. the way I thought. But God looked after me and provided for everything I need. Yeah. God is our provider. He is. Jesus is our life. Yes. It's him who gives us breath when we wake up every morning. When I wake up in the morning, I need to say, thank you, Jesus, that you gave me breath today. He is essential for every part of our life. Maybe the struggle, you know, of different way of life has made you feel discouraged or maybe what you need. Acts 17, 28 says, in him we live, we move, we have our being. Jesus is essential for every aspect of your daily life. He will give you everything that you need to get through each and every day Jesus is essential so our problem is that sometimes we think okay God I got it now the problem's over I can take it from here right or true. God I figured out this problem now I know how to live I've adjusted to it right. but what we need to understand is that that what we need is Jesus every day every day and every moment of every yes, day yes. recently I've been challenging people even in our in our in our Good Friday uh, prayer service I was challenging people use this opportunity to grow in your faith use this opportunity to get to know the Lord better than right. you do right now let right. me tell you this Jesus is your life you know what he gives you everything today why because Jesus gave it to me yes. I have life today why because Jesus, Jesus gave it yes. to me you know what he is my hope I live and move and have my being all because of Jesus today Jesus is essential to everything we need he is my peace he is my hope he is my strength he is my provider he is my life Jesus is my savior yes. and gives us a turn yes. we've all sinned Man, we've all done things the Bible told us we weren't right. supposed to do. Yes. And you know what? It doesn't matter how nice you are. We've all oh, disobeyed yes. God. Yes. We've all done things that God said we, we shouldn't do. But I'll tell you this. God's so good. God's so, so good. kind and he's so loving that he says, you know what? Even though you haven't done anything to deserve it, I'm going to send the Savior, yes. Jesus Christ. And, and tell you this, I love what the word says in Colossians chapter 1, 14. It says that Jesus came to forgive his sin. Listen to what it says. By his death and resurrection, by, by death and he purchased our freedom and forgave yes. our sins. Wow. Today I'm so excited yes. that because of Thank Jesus' Jesus. death, and his resurrection he purchased he paid for my yes. forgiveness of sins not only did he pay for my forgiveness of sins he paid for my freedom today yes. that guess what sin doesn't hold me back now yes. hallelujah my past now i'm free because jesus christ paid for my freedom i'm free today doesn't matter the addiction you're facing doesn't matter the challenge you're, you're facing you can yes. call on jesus because yes. jesus christ paid for your yes. freedom today so if we want, we can stay shackled. 
We can stay bound up, or we can say, today, Jesus, on the cross of Crowley, you died, and you were resurrected on the third day, and you paid for me to have life and have eternal life. You paid and purchased my freedom and my forgiveness of sins. Lord, I receive what you have for me today. This is incredible. There's no need. There's no need to stay. You say, but you think God could really love me? Not do I think. The Bible tells us. God's word tells us that he does love you, not because you're perfect, not because you have it all together, not because you never fail or never sin. He loves you because he's a good God and a kind God. And it was his plan for you that he would offer you an opportunity. It's your choice today. You can accept his freedom or you can reject it. It's really up to you. You can accept what he's done when he died and rose again. Or you can say, well, you know, Maybe for another day. Mm. Here's my challenge for you today. Accept what Christ has done. He died. That you could be saved. He's our Savior. See, there are so many things that Mm -hmm. you can live without. Right. But today, Jesus is essential. And he is what we need. He's what you need. He's what I need. We need everything that he has to offer us. And, you know, if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus today, we want to challenge you. Take this challenge that Pastor Kevin has said. We encourage you. He is essential. He will change and transform your life. Yeah, because because here's the thing. We all go through things. We all go through challenges. We all go through difficult days. all of us. But God loves you. And it doesn't matter today. Maybe you have a relationship with Jesus. He loves you. He'll help you. But you got to call. Right. Don't just get into the routine. You got to call. You got to ask him. You got to say, I need you to be a part of this. When the challenge comes, when the obstacle comes, you got to call on Jesus. The Jesus who died and was raised again on the third day. The Jesus who was victorious over death, hell, and the grave is the same Jesus who will be victorious in your life today. We all have it. We all have challenges. But today we can call. You know what? Good people have challenges. People that are having some issues have challenges. We all have challenges. We all need Jesus. He's essential to everything we need. He is. You know, in these crazy times that we're living in, we've said we need his strength. Yeah. We need his peace. Yeah. The strength and the peace and the joy that we have, it's only based on Jesus. Right. On the fact that Jesus has been victorious, that we call on Jesus. Everything around us is constantly changing. Yeah. We keep changing you know, all the time, the situation is fluid. The situation all over the world is fluid. It's, it's always changing. changing. There's always something new. But I want you to know today that Jesus, the Bible says he is the same yeah. yesterday, today, mm. and forever. He never changes. When you put a foundation of your life on Jesus, you don't have to worry about situations around us being fluid. He is a solid foundation. And he will consistently give you the hope and the and the strength that you need. When you call on him, he will give you the help and the healing that you need in your life. We can rely on him in every season, in good seasons, when everything is normal, when everything is fantastic and things are going well, you can rely on him. And when everything is chaos and turned upside down, you can rely on him. Every season of life, on this Easter Sunday, we are declaring that Jesus is essential. He's essential for your victory. He's essential for your life. He is everything that we need in every season of life to get through and to be everything that God has designed us to be. Absolutely. God's plan is to to do great things. God has great plans. Jesus is essential. And so today, I want to take an opportunity. I want to pray for people. Maybe you're here and you're saying, You said he's essential to everything I need. Mm -hmm. He's the answer to everything you need. Yes. And this is what I would like to do today. I'd like to maybe you're you're having an obstacle. In a moment, I would like to pray for you that God, 
who's a provider, will provide for you, yes. will give you exactly what you need. Yes. It may not be the way you want, when you want, or how you want, but God will look after you. And so if you're having a problem or a situation, I want to pray that God will help you today, that God will be with you, that that weight, that burden that you're carrying, that today God will carry it for you as you cast it on him. I would like to pray for you. Second person I'd like to pray for today, there's those that are listening to me, and maybe you don't have a relationship yet with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want to pray for you. Yes. You need to know today, you don't have to be good enough. You don't have to get some things fixed and get some things in order. Yes. You just have to make a decision. Yes. Jesus, today I choose to accept you as my Lord and Savior. If that's you today, then I want to encourage you with all your heart. In one moment, I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to pray that you can have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And then I want to pray for each and every person in this room that needs God's power to work in their lives. Yeah. And so uh, if you're here and you're in this place, and the first thing you say is, Pastor, I need you to pray for me. Yeah. Will you? I need a relationship with Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. If you haven't experienced his forgiveness, today's the day. You need his direction in your life. Today's the day. Today. You need to know that he loves you. Today's the day. Yeah. If you ask him, ask him to forgive you of your sins. He'll forgive you. You don't have to have it all together. Just ask him. Say, today, Jesus, yeah. I need you. And so this is what I want to do. Before I pray for everybody who has a need and saying, Jesus, I need you to help me in my life and my situation, I want to pray first for those who say, I need Jesus as my Savior. And so sometimes people say, well, I'm not sure what to pray. I'm, sure, I'm not sure what to say. Well, you know what? I want to make it easy. Just say this simple prayer after me. And it's not a crazy thing. We're just going to ask God to forgive us of our sins. Yeah. We're going to ask him to forgive us of the things that we've done wrong. And, and we acknowledge that the things that I've done, I've done against God as I've disobeyed the Bible. Right. And the Bible promises that when we ask him to forgive us, he's faithful and just. He forgives yeah. us of all of our sins. Can you imagine that? Everything you've done wrong, everything that you've done that the Bible said don't do, Thank you, Jesus. when you pray and ask God to forgive, forgive you right That's now. Awesome. Man, don't carry it. Don't wonder about today or tomorrow or the future. Right. You can have confidence in this one thing. Yeah. We don't know about tomorrow. It, the Bible says it's promised to no man. But I can know and have a confidence yeah. in Jesus Christ. Yeah. That he will save me. And that affects my now. And that affects my eternity. Yeah. And so if that's you and you want to pray this prayer, I want you to say this after me. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I ask you now. I ask you now. That you would come into my heart and life. That you would come into my heart and life. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. And I ask you now. And I ask you now. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. For everything I've done wrong. For everything I've done wrong. For all the ways I've disobeyed your word. For all the ways I've disobeyed your word. Today. Today. On this Easter Sunday. On Easter Sunday. I accept you now. I accept you now. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 And now, listen, do me a favor. If you've prayed that prayer, I want you to send me an email. Let me know you prayed the prayer because I want to rejoice. I want to celebrate with you. You've made the greatest decision at all. And I want to do something else. I want to give some tools to help you be successful in this decision you've just made. You know, there's all kinds of decisions we make and we feel like we're out there on our own. Nobody's helping us. Nobody's on our side. But this decision you made, we are on your side. We want to help you get to know Jesus. We want to help you to how to, to grow in this relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And then final thing is I want to take an opportunity today and pray for those that in this place you say, you know what, I've been going through a battle. And maybe you just accept or maybe for years. It doesn't really matter. But you've been going through a battle. I want to pray for you right now. Maybe you're going through a difficult thing. Maybe, maybe you're missing peace. Maybe you're lacking hope in your life, in your situation. Maybe you just feel drained. You feel empty. You feel like you got no gas in the tank. And you need God's strength to come and give you strength. Maybe you're listening to this today. And you just say, God, I need your help. I need you to provide for me. I don't know where I'm going to turn. I don't know where to look to. But God, I need you to provide. And if that's you, and you need help. To, to be there to help you with the practical things you're not sure where to turn or where to go I want you to do this right now I want you to put your hand in the air right now to the Lord it's not for me it's to the Lord and as you put your hand you're saying God I need you 
God, I need you in my life. And God, for every person with their hands raised right now, I ask, oh God, that you would bring a miracle into their life. Bring a miracle into their situation. God, you see the circumstances. And you told us in your word, we have not because we ask not. So we come to you now in confidence. We come to you now in faith. And we say, Lord, bring a miracle into these lives and into these situations. Lord, we don't know how to turn it. But God, you are the God of the impossible. You have conquered death, hell, and the grave. You said you've come to offer us that, that you would have that we'd have life and have it more abundantly. So Lord, I pray now, let your life, let your power, let your strength, let your miracle provision be released into these people's hearts right now. People that are desperate for you, people that are hungry for you, people that need you. God, work in their lives and work in their situations right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you on this Easter Sunday. Jesus is alive. Yes, he is. He's here. And we might be separated today by distance. But you need to hear me today. He's not separated from you. There's no distance with him. Yes. If you're on the mountaintop, he's with you. Yes. If you're in the valley, he's with you. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. God loves you today excited today that Jesus is essential in it does we don't he doesn't need a government official to say he's essential Jesus is essential he's essential to your life he's essential to your victory he's essential to everything you need Pastor Pam I'm so thankful today Jesus is essential. Yeah. We, we want to take a moment right now. We want you to join with us. We are going to invite Afia, and we're just going to take a moment to sing and just declare the name of Jesus because we've said that he is essential. Yes. On this Easter Sunday, as we just come together, if you know this song, just join right where you are and just sing with Afia. But we are going to yeah. declare today that Jesus is essential. We're going to lift up his name. You are the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord most high. You hid in glory in creation, now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. In one heaven without us So Jesus, you brought heaven down Oh, my sin was great, your love was greater And what could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is what a wonderful name it is the name of jesus christ my king what a wonderful name it is nothing compares to this what a wonderful name it is the name of jesus what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus. Oh, 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 we thank you, Jesus. We give you the praise. We thank you for your resurrection, Jesus. We bless your name, God. There is none like you, Jesus. Oh. oh, oh. Death could not hold you, the veil tore before 
you you silence the boast of sin grand. the heavens are roaring the praise of your glory for you are raised to life again you have no rival you have no equal now and forever god you reign yours is the kingdom yours is the glory yours is the name above all names what a powerful name it is what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. You have no rival. You have no equal. that's so powerful because he is worthy there's none like him and none beside him and it's my prayer that as you sung that song that we didn't just turn it as a song or as, a, as like we would hear on the radio but that it would some that that we could agree with that he is worthy and i love it because you declared today through song that he is powerful and there's no other name like the name of jesus that same jesus is right with you and will work in your life today Hallelujah. Amen. I'm so excited. I'm just excited that it's been a great Easter Sunday morning. Yep. And uh, it's different. Different. But, but I'll tell you this. God yes. isn't uh, restricted because it's different. Right. You know what? Difference doesn't matter to God. No. God doesn't need something that's the same. He just needs an open heart. Yes. He just needs somebody that says, God, it doesn't matter what my environment is, what my surroundings is. Today, I take hold of you. Right. Take hold of your word right. and what you've declared. Yes. 
And I just love it. It is, it is different, but it is amazing. And we, Jesus is essential. Now, before we close um, this morning and just go to a couple announcements, there is something very important that I want to take this opportunity just to share with you and just remind us. You know, we, we've heard the term before, you know, what goes around comes around. I don't know if you've you know, ever heard that. And sometimes it's used like in a negative when somebody does something bad or it's going to come back. But you know, the Bible also gives us this in a positive. And the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians, it says that when we, what we sow, we will also reap. And so when we, you know, are generous, then God also gives back to us in generosity. And this is a really powerful biblical principle. You say, well, you know, how does that kind of flow out or, or apply in my life? I want to share with you an incredible story um, this week from one of our partners here at HWC. You know, they were sharing with us the fact that they had planned to go away um, on a trip. And so because they were going away, they had gone onto our HWC app. They said, I want to make sure that I'm faithful in giving, you know, to the church. I give my tithe, I give my offering. And so what they did was they set up um, a recurring amount for to come out of their account so that they could give. Well, their trip got canceled. While they were on vacation, they made sure that their, yes, their yep. ties and they offerings, wanted to make sure. they wanted to make sure they put it yeah, in. They were generous uh, into the Lord and His work. That they were generous to the Lord. Well, and I'll tell you, to, this, whenever yep. you do that, look out because God's going to bless you. God is going to bless you. Yes. So they did that, but their, their uh, trip got canceled. And, you know, with all of the things going on. And not only did their trip get canceled, but also in addition to that, um, you know, the one of their the spouses, Clint, the husband, he got laid off of his job. And so, so because of barely what's he, going on. The vacation was supposed to be over and all these things were going on in right, our world. Right. And then he gets laid off of his job got, to make matters worse. To make matters worse, got laid off from his job. And so, um, you know, his wife, Sandra, she said, well, I'm going to go in and uh, I'm going to I'm going to change the day because you know, he's not being paid on that payday. I'm going to change the day that our giving is going to come out. So she went to change the day. But then they talked about it. They said, you know what? We're not going to change the amount. So even though we don't have he doesn't have this job now. So, so wait a second. So, so the they're on half of the, like, like half the income they were because one right. working now one isn't. Right. And they determined that they weren't going to change the right. amount they were the giving amount. just so the they, day. Just the day. So it would come out based on her salary payday. Right. Because his didn't exist anymore. His wasn't coming in, but they said wow. no because and they had and he didn't have one lined up. No, he didn't have one lined up. Okay. And they said we're going to trust God, and we're going to trust what the Word of God says. That you know what we sow will also reap. And so they chose that to trust God. They said, We're gonna trust Him and we're gonna believe Him. And so they, you know, said that. And the next day, you know, the, the next time frame, the check came out. But do you know something? In that time, they didn't change the amount. And in that time, he actually applied for another job. A different job, totally a different. A completely different job because his company shut down right so now. So a different company. Completely different company, completely different job. And, and and with all of these layoffs and things going on, so many people out of work right now. And so my guess is it would be a lot of competition for jobs A lot of competition for people who want jobs. Right. And you know, he got a job wow. right away the next week. <laughs> and he did not miss one paycheck. Oh, come on. So the next pay his last paycheck and then they were faithful to give and but the next paycheck he'd already started he already got another job with all the competition all like a million people being laid off so he didn't and even he got, miss one paycheck yes i believe that is the faithfulness of god and so we you know god is provider he is provider and so when if we're you faithful, just trust him when we're right. faithful uh, with our ties and offers god promises to protect him so yeah. he's I'm going to look after that. I'm yeah. going to rebuke the devourer, the, yes. what, the one that's going to try to come and take from you. Yeah. God's going to stand up and say, uh-uh, you don't yeah. get that chance. So you know what? Uh, Clint lost his job, but Jesus Christ stood up for Clint yeah. and Sandra and said, devourer, back off. They are my servants and they're faithful. And he yeah. blesses them. That's yeah. incredible. So today... We want to take, we want to give you the opportunity to be able to give your tithe and your offering because we know you do not want to miss out on this opportunity for God to bless you. So there are three ways you can do this and they're on the screen for you right now. You can give by the HWC app. 
That's the easiest, Sim it's a, simple, very, a simple. very simple way to give. Or you can and it's give, secure and safe. And it's secure and safe. Or you can give by text, yep. which is the also numbers. another very easy and way. And it's secure too. It's a secured screen. line, secured number. It's a professional yes. company. So you can give by text yes. and not have worry where it's going. And Or you can also contact one of our incredible staff if you'd like to make other arrangements. And their number is also on the screen. And they would be able to assist you and make sure um, that you have this opportunity. So we want to See, it's something we've discovered, and we sure wouldn't want to miss an opportunity, yeah. and we want to be able to help you to be able to be faithful to God yes. so that you see God's provision and blessing to its extent in your his extent in your life. Yes, so we are just trusting that God is going to continue to be faithful. What he's done for us, what he did for Clinton Sandra, we believe that God can do for you. So we love you. God bless you. We have a few really exciting announcements for you, and we know that you're going to want to hear that. And we can't wait until the next time we get together. Have a happy Easter. Now, just before we do, I got one more thing. One more I, thing. I, I want to say this announcement too. Don't forget today to post your family picture. Put on it, hashtag HWC Easter 2020. Hashtag stay at home. Hashtag can stay connected to HWC family. Put that on your photo. We, I'll tell you this. We, we, we just want to flood it because although we're separated by distance, we just want to see each other's, you know, we love you. We want to see your photo so that we can, you know, you post it. We're going to put 100 likes on your photo because we just think we're going to put smiley faces and all that because we're just the family of God. We're separated by distance right now. But I'll tell you this, our hearts are knit together. Stay connected. Stay connected with what God has. This Easter Sunday, walk in resurrection power in your life. That was an amazing word today. Here at HWC, we have something for everyone. And just because we're not together, it doesn't mean that things are still not going on. So we want everyone to join a connect group. Connect during this time of isolation with other people. Download the HWC app to see which connect group fits best for you. And make sure you're following us on Instagram and Facebook. The tags for us are just below here. Following us, turn on the notifications. We have so many new and exciting things going on. You're you're not gonna wanna miss any of them and they're all gonna be posted on there. Mother's Day is coming up, which is gonna be a great celebration. We have a lot of fun things going on for Mother's Day. We have something new, never done before. So make sure you're following us. We're gonna post it and keep you updated on what is gonna be happening on Mother's Day. We're so excited for what's coming up. Stay connected, follow us, and continue to tune in to all of our videos and connect groups.